In this video, I'm just going to talk you through the start uh, of planning a flight. So hopefully you've got access to this Padlet page. should have a whole bunch of information, and I'll try to use this as I go through. Just really quickly here, overview of objectives. You should be able to find an airport identifier. We'll talk through that. Uh, you should, once you have that, you should be able to use the airport identifier to find the weather at the airports. You should be able to use uh, that identifier to find the airport diagram. And the diagrams you can use to identify the runways. And then thinking about planning a flight, we'll identify a departure airport, the departure runway, and then we'll do a check to see if we're within our crosswind tolerance, arrival airport, landing runway, again, making sure we're going to be within our crosswind tolerance. And then a couple of other pieces of information, the field elevation for the departure and arrival. We'll need the traffic pattern, altitude, the TPA, and we'll determine uh, our altitude for the flight. And then the first task that I think we'll pose is, when do you need to start your descent so that you reach the traffic pattern altitude five miles before you arrive at the airport? Just a couple of other uh, things that I've added on the page here. So. This is from a, an aviation magazine that I get and talks about there's some high schools that are actually creating partnerships with uh, uh, or they're trying to incorporate aviation into their curriculum. There's lots of people are saying there's going to be a huge uh, pilot shortage coming up and huge need for uh, pilots and air traffic controllers. So you can just read this for your own interest. Um, we're also talking about planning flights to go places, and there, this is just some articles that give research about uh, the benefits for planning vacations and taking vacations. So I just thought it was interesting. You can read that. Lots of abbreviations in aviation. So there's a link here that'll take you to uh, a website that'll help you find what some of those abbreviations ne mean if needed. And I'll try not to use abbreviations without telling you what they are, but. All right, so let's plan a let's plan a flight. Uh, I'm going to do a somewhere local airport to me, and within a few hundred miles, probably a little over a hundred, or maybe just a little under a hundred for this one. Um, and so you can read through this, but I'm going to just do an example. And so what I've done is I just got a word document started here to keep track of all the information. For me, I'm going to depart from normal, and I'm going to land at DuPage Airport but I need to know what the technical identifiers are for these, the airports, the airport in normal. Is there an airport in normal? I want to find those identifiers first. So I'll switch back to the Padlet page. Here's a link. It says finding airports and it says diagrams as well. I'll click on that link. I'll open up. I'll say view original. And I'm going to type in normal Illinois. I'll hit enter. And it should bring me to the one and only airport that's in that vicinity. And what I want to do is get the information, the identifier, Kilo Bravo Mike India, K-B-M-I. And I'm just going to record that over here in my Word document. And we want to figure out where we're going. So where is DuPage Airport? So I'll go back. And, and there's a lot of information on this page, but I don't want to, uh, I think it's a little, little bit overwhelming right now. So we're just going to take that identifier. We'll go back and we'll do West Chicago. And I don't know if I clicked the button wrong or something, but if I put the Illinois in there, it doesn't seem to work. So I just clicked on West Chicago or typed in West Chicago. And I get the identifier here is DPA, Delta, Papa, Alpha. And you got to be careful. This is the airport identifier. But if I click on this, to identify in the system that it is an airport, it starts off with a K. So airports, almost all of them, will start with a K in, in uh, North America, I believe. So I'll click back, and I want to record KDPA. And I think that's everything that I want from the first website, which was AirNav. So I'm going to close that website. I'm going to click off. And now I've got that information. I'm going to start thinking about my flight. I'm going to go to Sky Vector to do that. So I'll click on that link, view original, and I get a map here. Um, just a couple of things that yours might not look exactly the same when you open it up. There's different um, maps that you can actually open up, and depending on what you want to look at. And if we look, uh, 
Chicago. This gives you the Chicago sectional, which is kind of interesting. It gives you, this is what the actual paper map would look like if you were holding it in your hands. Um, and so there is some information up here. If you ever, you know, if you're curious or interested, you can sort of look around here. Uh, for example, this is information about military operation airspace. Uh, probably not going to be covering that in this, uh, but just in case you're interested. But what I would do is just click on World VFR. That should be sufficient. I can zoom out just by scrolling. And now I think I would also, uh, I think it makes it easier to select the airport. So I'm going to go Layers, and I'm going to turn on Text for the weather. And all that does is puts a pin at every one of the airports that has a weather reporting station. And if you just hover over one of them, it'll give you some jumbled mess about what the weather is at that airport. So we'll talk about that at a later time. But it makes it much easier to, to just select the airports when you want. And you can just hover over them. This one's Springfield. This is uh, Lincoln, Logan County. And here's Bloomington. But we don't have to search. We already found the identifier. So our departure is KBMI. And our destination is K. Delta Papa Alpha, and I'll just hit enter, and it might take a second, but it should it should give us a, a route between those two here. I'm not sure why it's not going. Uh, sorry about that. I'm still not sure why the route didn't pop up. Hopefully yours did. If it didn't, all I did was right click. You have to find the airport, but if you right click on an airport. You can click plan and then I missed the airport there. But, uh, so this is Willard at, uh, by Champaign. I can click on plan and you can plan the route that way. So I did uh, Bloomington to DuPage, but hopefully, like I said, hopefully yours popped up. So when I look at this, I get some information right away. I get 022 and 91 nm. This is a compass setting, 022 degrees and a distance, 91 nautical miles. So that's the total. Uh, we're just doing a direct route here, 022 on the compass for 91 nautical miles. So what I want to do with this, uh, from the Sky Vector page though, the nice thing I think if I right click on the airport, you can either click on the airport and say plan, I don't want to do that, I want to click on the uh, link over here, and it'll take me to a page and I have a bunch of information. I'd be curious, I think uh, when you fill up your car it's expensive. This is what typically used for general aviation, and the fuel price is five fifty nine a gallon. So three dollars three fifty a gallon doesn't sound so bad. So on the left hand side here, airport diagram. I can click on the airport diagram. Again, get lots of information here. But what I'm most interested in right now is finding the field elevation. So there's a little box here that says field elevation eight seventy one. There's other information here and here about elevation. Those are for the particular uh, touchdown ends of the runway. So <clears throat> the field elevation for runway 20 is about 863, but the field elevation, they just pick one spot, so 871. So I'll move back over here, and I'm going to say information for Bloomington's airport. Field elevation is going to be 871 feet, and that might be a discussion to have with students. The, that number, what is 871 feet? What if that's 871? What's zero? And zero is mean sea level. So that spot is 871 feet above mean sea level. And then just really quickly here, we should also get the traffic pattern altitude just in case we happen to need it. And for the most part, all of these airports, for a, for a small aircraft, the field elevation plus 800 feet should give you the traffic pattern altitude. So 1671, in this case, should be the traffic pattern altitude. And then we'll do this again for DuPage. So field elevation at DuPage, let's go find that. We'll go arrow back. And arrow back again on this page. We'll right click on DuPage and then click on the icon. Traffic, uh, then here's the airport diagram. 
Again, lots of information. We'll look at this again in a little bit, pull out some other information. But right now what we're looking for is a box somewhere that says field elevation, upper right-hand corner here, field elevation of 759 feet above mean sea level. So field elevation 759. And then the traffic pattern altitude will just be 759 plus 800, so 1559. And the last thing we'll need to do here is pick our cruising altitude. So I'll give you a little bit more information here than you probably need, but there's visual flight rules and there's instrument flight rules. So we'll do visual flight rules first. So on a compass heading between uh, any, if your flight is on a compass heading of 0 to 179, your, and you're flying in visual, under visual flight rules, meaning you can see the ground, uh, you can see other traffic, so there's no clouds, or you're not flying in the clouds, then you fly, um, and you're flying on the east side of the compass, so between 0 and 179 degrees, you would fly on the east side, it's odd thousand plus five hundred feet. And we'll do an example. And then one eighty to uh, three fifty nine, the other side of the compass, under visual flight rules, you'd fly even thousands plus five hundred. And then there's also IFR instrument light rules. And we've got the same breakpoint, so 0 to 179 on the compass. And this is just going to be odd thousands of feet. And 180 through 359 is going to be even thousands. And I did notice that. It's not even. Even. Okay, so let's go pick, and let's just say we're going to do visual flight rules. And we'll go back. If we go back to the Sky Vector page, we put in our uh, departure airport and our destination airport. And Sky Vector gives us the compass heading for that direct route of 0, 0, 2, 2 degrees. So that is between 0 and 179, which means we're on the east side of the compass, which means we should be flying an odd number of 1,000 feet plus 500. So for this example, let's pick our cruise altitude to be 5,500 feet. All right, I think that's everything for step one. So I'll take a break here.